welcome to Fishtail Fry Time. Alright, let's hope this thing holds focus. I am going to tie a clouser. We're getting ready for the white bass season. And I'm going to make several sizes and several versions of this clouser I've been thinking about making. Uh, it's going to have one thing that's different for a clouser. Uh, and that's going to be a deer hair head. The rest of it's going to be just the same as normal. Uh, I'm going to do this first one on a size 6 hook. And uh, then I'm going to put them on a size 8 and then on a size 10. I'm going to build several because you need a lot in the white bass season. Because once you find the size that works, uh, you better have a bunch of them. Because you're going to go through them if the fishing's really good. But at any rate, let's get this thing started. Alright. Uh, I found one very important thing. And that's the bead chain eyes. In the very heart of the clousers that I tie. So, let's thread up the hook. Because it's going to be just a little different than normal. I'm going to give me a good thread base here. I am going to keep the eyes back away from the eye of the hook typically goes and you got to remember this thing runs hook up and I got it too loose all right there we go I'll hold still get that get those in place oh, the distance back from the eye of the hook is going to be important in the last step of this build of this tie all right we got that done i'm not going to overly tighten them at this point i do not need it to be super tight at this point all right the first thing i want to do is i want to get the base layer and i'm going to use white marabou i'm not going to do deer hair for the body so i'm going to get me a nice white feather marabou good fluffy stuff and i'm going to take a big chunk of it it's also very important to understand that a working clouser in the spring is going to be a very sparse fly so that's what's going to happen with these, very sparse. And I'm going to add the flash, which I've got some of this stuff. This is a this will make for just a very tiny, tiny amount of flash in the base of the body, and I'm only going on back. About right there, come back to the front, spin it around, I believe they call this palmering, now, this is a fairly large clouser on a number six hook, we don't use a lot of number six, we use a lot of number eight, and when the fish don't like the number eight, we go to a number ten. At least that's the way it's been the last couple of years. Square those eyeballs out. Okay. Now, I'm going to top this one with green marabou. And I'll get several out of one feather. Same thing. I'm going to pull some strands off of this. Just a few. I'm going to test these out in the pond. Maybe not today. It, yesterday was a beautiful day. These go on the top. And this thing is supposed to run hook up. We'll hope it does. Alright, let's roll that up tight. And I'm just securing this on top of the eyes. I'm not running back down the shaft because I don't want it to compress my flash. Alright, I'll 
we got that on there. Here's what's different. This is something I've been thinking about. This will likely make this thing float. So I might have to take a slip shot or a weighted fly. I got me a little tuft of deer hair. And I'm going to strap this on top of this fly. I'm going to try to keep it all up on top. And you do that by doing a couple of loose wraps. And then you let it fluff. I'm going to pull it back. And get in front of it. And I can already tell I need to do something a little different. Tell you what, we're not going to do it on this one. We're going to take that back just like this. Grab every bit of those fibers. Do a whip. Just a overhand knot here. And I'm going to hit that with some super glue. Leave that thread long for the minute. Now what I want to do is I want to pull all this up and start cutting it off. Alright, then I'm going to put a drop of super glue on the base of this. And I have found that this gel glue is way better. It doesn't run. It will harden that thread. The nose on this thing is a little dirty, but it's a price you pay. All right, there you go. There's a big one. I see I got some long hairs I want to pluck out of here. That's how it runs in the water, just like that. I'm assuming this hair is going to help this fly float. Now what I want to do is I want to get my fingernail thingamajigger. I'm going to take the burrs off of the eyeballs. Much better. Okay. There we go. See that? Now what I want to do is take a black magic marker and color that eyeball black. And there you go. See that? Now it's got a black eyeball. That's upside down. That's right side up. That's how it's supposed to run through the water. I've got the eye of the hook covered, but it's very light fluffy material all right let me make a few more of them and uh, take them down to the pond and give them a shot see what happens see if the big bass like them I might have to put some bars on this one take a magic marker and put bars on it because everything in the pond that they're eating at the moment has got bars stripes but I'm hoping this thing is large enough for the black bass in the pond and also small enough I'll make smaller versions like on a size 8 and and probably tighten the deer hair up quite a bit oh come on now don't be going out of focus there you go there you have it one nice deer head uh, deer hair head clouser Probably gonna end up cutting too much of this stuff off, but I want it to be slim. 
There we go. Now that's getting more to my liking. You gotta remember that marabou is gonna fluff up big time once it gets in the water. Oh yeah, that's the key right there. Give that thing a tight, tight, tight head. I'm assuming that this will cause some turbulence too, so maybe it'll help attract the fish as well. Yeah, it's like shaving my face. I constantly find hairs out of whack. Probably wouldn't have hurt to leave a few of these long. Oh, 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 oh. No, I'm just getting stupid. There we go. All right. Let's go see how it works. It's cold. It's windy. It's gray, cloudy. Probably the worst day possible to be testing a fly. But let's see what happens. Oh, it's cold. I'm not going to film any of this until I catch something. The sky's clearing up. That's not what the weather forecast called for. It's supposed to be cloudy all day. But they're going that way. It is a cool front, so that's good. That's great. Pretty. Bass totally ignore this thing. At least in this pond they do. So I gave it a real haircut. I cut that way back. I mean, I've had one little old peck at it. And that was probably a sunfish. The wind's going to lay up for me, looks like. I threw some food out on the other side so that it'd float clear across the lake, but nothing's taking it. These the sunfish, at least, are not active, which that's what I expect. That's what I see every year when the water gets cold. They go inactive, even though there is a some sort of bug hatch going on. These bass have been right here at my feet. They're still attacking the little fish right along the shoreline. A lot of this. No reward yet. Oh, 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 oh. Spoke too soon. I think something finally took a whack at it. All right, well, let's keep going here. I'll bring you back in if I catch something. Different than it did when I started. Yeah, <laughs> sun comes out, clouds go away, temperatures coming up, feels good. Wind stopped blowing so hard. At least there's a lull. Let's see if maybe that turns some fish on. Oh, here's a whopper. Here's a whopper. But it's a fish. On my new version of Clouser. Very butchered up fly. Yes. Might be one of the last go rounds. I'm sure the rut has wound down quite a bit. It's been dry and it's getting dry again. These have been some really good cameras. Blaze video. They work like a champ. Let's see what we got. Okie dokie, let's go check out the mirror, mirror on a tree. What did you see this week?
<laughs> chaser. I got one chased it. There's a fish playing up in that shallow water. Oh, I lost him. That was a slightly bigger bass. <laughs> they are, they're working this. All this water right up against the edge. Trying to get the last few of these tilapia in here. Big bass are hitting the pellets way out there. That's bass. Boy, they make a big splash when they hit a pellet. Still throwing my clouser fly, but <laughs> can't get that far, <laughs> even with a wind assist. But I do know what to do. They'll come back in this direction if I throw some more pellets out. Yeah, that's just a wee bit far. I don't know, maybe I can reach him from the other side. Let me throw some more pellets, see if I can't get them closer to this side. Big old sunfish on a hedgehog. Might be a big one. Pulling like one. That's gonna be a bass. Maybe a pulling line. You just let them run. They get tired and then they come in. This would be a good bass. To start 2024, he's coming this way. He's coming this way. Come on, buddy. Come on. I'm get a good look at you. It's gonna be one of them two pounders. Maybe three. One thing for sure, it's gonna be a bass, a pellet-fed bass, and he's taking me for a run. This is a number 10 thin wire wide gap hook, so you know better than to put too much pressure on them. Six pound test fluorocarbon leader tippet. Tippet, the uh, now he, gonna, he might be a little bigger. It was worth the wait. This is going to be a bigger fish. He got good energy, too. On the hedgehog. Hedgehog pellet fly. <laughs> Come on, big fish. That's what the last great big giant one did. Walked me clear around the pond. Yeah, it's gonna be a good fish. It'll be the last fish, cause I'm done. Come on, give it up. Give it up, fishy. Give it up. Yeah, that's what the last one did. Oh, yeah, that's a good fish. Not as big as I thought it was, but uh, it's definitely a good fish. Oh, yeah, it'd be about four pounds. There you go. Well, it's not my clouser. Good Lord, look at how fat that fish is. <laughs> That's a good way to lose them, huh? <laughs> Ooh, and that fly is just barely hanging on. It's barely hanging on. Look at that. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> good thing I didn't put much pressure on. Yeah, that's, a, that's a good hefty four-pound fish. Look at the belly. Get a picture and get him back in the water. I've been fishing for more than two hours today. Get that little thing. That tiny, tiny, tiny fly. <laughs> a big old thick backed fish. I do believe this thing is probably, it's a good solid four pounds, but it might be as heavy as five. But that's what you get when you feed them pellets. That's the last fish of the day. Perfect. Now I can go home and have my black-eyed peas, cabbage, sausage, 
all the good stuff to start the year. Let me get my glasses, they fell out. <laughs> and went for a ride.